Hello and welcome. My name is Laura Lee. I'm a COVID-19 focal point for the Alliance, and that's the Alliance in Child Protection and Humanitarian Action. And this is Judy. Hello, everyone. It's great to be with you, and we're really excited to share with you what we learned from the annual meeting in 2020 for the Alliance. When we had a workshop with a number of people who gave us great feedback, on what we need to do in order to really protect children during pandemics. So Laura, when we look at that and we look at the number of people that we worked with in that those workshops, how many actually gave us that? Actually, it was really neat at this annual meeting because it was online. We had over 600 people in attendance from all over the world. And so got insights from so many different corners of the globe, as well as different perspectives and contexts. And at this annual meeting, um, we were able to use a model to filter people's perceptions and views that is called the socio-ecological model. And this model places the child at the center and looks at them within the context of a family, a community, and a society. So it's a neat way to look at all of the perspectives and see that child at the center. Yeah, and I think that that was really carried forward into what people told us because in that meeting and those workshops, they really zeroed in on the centrality of the child and on accountability. Yeah, the centrality of the child is really the main critical action um, or what guided the first critical action, which is to be guided by and accountable to children. And in this critical action, it's more than child participation. It's really engaging children in all phases of programming, whether it's planning, implementing, monitoring, evaluation, risk assessments, uh, and whether it's preventative efforts or response. So in the context of the infectious disease outbreak, there was some great examples of that happening, um, but it wasn't done enough. So that was a real lesson learned. Um, and so what this also showed us is that we need to be accountable to children. Can yeah. you speak to that a little bit? That was a big one. So as you can see from the PowerPoint right now, we have the child in the middle, and then we have six critical action steps around the child. And the first one is being accountable. And what was really interesting for us when people asked and wanted to have an accountability framework is that they said they wanted to be accountable to children. And that over 20% of them said, let's be accountable to children. And then the next group that they wanted us to be accountable to were communities. And so over 15% identified communities as being important. And the third group was being accountable with the Child Protection Act. So that was a really critical piece. And then we had other critical actions. So Laura, what were some of those other critical actions? Yeah, so after the first one, being guided by and accountable to children and promoting meaningful parts participation. Uh, the second was leveraging and building on trusting relationships. So this is where we kind of do a mapping and look at the, the relationships in the community even before a crisis so that those can be built upon when the crisis occurs. Uh, the third is using appropriate, available and safe means of communication. So really thinking about language, modality, uh, safe online protocols, and even looking uh, to reduce any discriminatory messaging. The fourth is conducting contextual and individual risk assessments. So considering vulnerabilities um, and risks uh, in different contexts. And the fifth is promote and resource child well-being. And this is where we really consider mental health and psychosocial well-being to be an essential service and that we really need to resource this. So important that that is resourced and that we approach the child in a really holistic manner. Mm -hmm. And that means that we go to the sixth critical action is that we adapt our programs so that we really are dealing with the pandemic and the infectious disease outbreak in front of us. And that that adaptation means that we include all those other critical actions that came in. And then I think the other that they spoke so strongly about at the meeting, Laura, was around um, doing no harm. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit around what was actually said around that? Yeah, I mean, when we think about do no harm in child protection, it's a critical 
um, point that needs to frame our actions and, and words and, and what guides what we do. But here, a real critical element around power imbalances also came up, where we need to be aware of power imbalances, uh, again, in different contexts, and really let child engagement, families and communities, meaning guide the processes. And so this became something that was really uh, important uh, that framed all of the critical actions. Yes. And that power imbalance is so important that we recognize that and that we humbly move forward and that we listen to kids. And this is a journey that we're on. And it's a journey of being able to take these critical actions and apply them. And it means that we need to step out into, for many of us, into an uncomfortable zone because we're not sure quite how to do this. And I think there's a great quote that I want to leave you with. And the quote says, stepping onto a brand new path is difficult, but not more difficult than remaining in a situation. Thank you.